Uh, hello, this is a, going to be a follow-up note on uh, the QTVLM Tides and Currents application that's built into the program. QTVLM is a free Mac or PC uh, computer navigation and weather program. And we have a lot of videos, and I'll link to the video tutorials and cheat sheets on use of the program. And um, But what I want to stress now is something that came up in class. And uh, let, let me start this way. Um, 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 let me see pictures. Okay, here let's remind ourselves of what uh, some history. history. Uh, from 2020, 2020 and earlier, this is the way navigators did tides and currents. This happened to be the currents, but the tides were exactly analogy. We would have a book that listed a handful of reference stations, like this Chesapeake Bay, and then we'd have this great thick, long table, table two, of all the corrections for the many hundreds of uh, secondary or subordinate stations. So if we wanted to know the, the, the data at Cape Henry Light, 0.8 nautical miles northeast of, we would come in here and we would find uh, corrections to apply to, Ches it says here, Chesapeake Bay, we would apply these corrections to both the times and the currents, and uh, these would all be different. It would be different before the ebb and after the ebb and so forth. It was a rather tedious table, and especially when you get to the tides where the correction could be multiplicative or it could be additive. Well, that is all history now. If you see any table like this in any exam or book you might buy or run across, you can, uh, you can set it aside. These tables are no longer officially sanctioned by NOAA, and the, as of 2020, they've been discontinued. And the reason is many of the numbers in them are simply not right. Or even more often, there are places given where it's telling you the current where NOAA does not, in fact, know that current. And they've admitted that or have, have recognized that and so have discontinued these tables. This is all history. Now, with these tables gone, uh, with these tables gone, we are relying more on either going directly to NOAA to get the data and, um, oh, and by the way, NOAA has discontinued. There are no sanctioned, NOAA sanctioned annual tide and current tables anymore. Sure enough, they're still being published and they, and they include this table too, which is defunct, but uh, these are no longer NOAA sanctioned publications. So we are relying more on getting our data directly from NOAA. Like you can go here, and we have videos on how to do this the most efficient way. You would go to your state, then you click Advanced, then you come down here, and I say I want current predictions, and you come in here, and then you find your then you find your current predictions, and you get this, and then you can click more data and go on, and you can in fact make your own tables now. You can make your own tables, annual tables but they are made for individual stations. There's no more of these uh, correction tables made. So that's, uh, that's, uh, one of, that's our now primary resource, but it is much more convenient if you have a navigation program or some other app that will directly tell you these uh, tides and currents. And QTVLM has, in fact, one of the best. And in fact, it is good enough that one might want to consider using it as effectively a tide and current application, even if you're not using QTVLM for your primary navigation. It's a little, well, okay. Uh, let's see, let me, let me go on here. Um, Let's come back to this. Oh, I don't, I'm going to come back to these tables in a minute. Let's see, what else do I want to say here? Um, uh, they're tied, okay, the best, okay, uh, the crew to VLM. They're, oh, okay, and then you can run, I'm show, now I'm showing the currents here, and these turn on with, uh, with, if you load QTVLM, and this is no charts, you can view the tide and current data with or without charts. This turns on all of the current stations. These are the official NOAA stations that are still there. 
and these are the, then the tide stations here like this. And these are little meters, actually. You see this has got a higher tide here than over here, and these are higher and so on. And then, and then you come in here and you can click these and go read the detail. Also, oh, let's see if I just put the mouse on there. Yeah, if you just put your mouse over there, then you get a tool tip, sort of, that tells you the tides like that. Or you can right-click it and get the details. And this is the, all these things here is what I want to talk about today, mostly. But there's various ways you set this up. And you can set up, um, um, like, for example, if I shut this off and show the currents, you see I can also go here. I'm doing, I'm doing some keystrokes to get into these controls. Um, 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 gribs and harmonics, harmonics. You see, here's where you can turn on, you can turn on labels. You can turn on labels, you can control the size of this. This, this zoom level, 10 is probably good. That's when they, these arrows turn from a dot to actually the arrows. If you're zoomed way out, these arrows can just pile up and fill up the screen. So you have to have some convention on when you, how, how, you have to zoom in so far just to see these. So these are setup things you can do with the setup. Now I just turned on those labels. So you see there's the labels. Now they may be in your way. You don't need them. You can come back and then just um, in the uh, harmonic, cribs and harmonics, get in the harmonics, and you can, you can shut those labels off if you want to. Um, and that doesn't matter. You can always just put your cursor over it and you'll get, the, you'll get the currents. Now, notice here that we have two arrows and two currents. That's because NOAA actually provides data at multiple depths. For the most part, we only care about the shallowest. But there are some cases where there's 5, 10 feet, and then there's down at 25 feet. So it depends, and maybe 50 feet. So it might depend on the size of your vessel if you want to look a little bit deeper or to see how much it does change. But generally speaking, we take the top one, closest to the bottom, closest to the top surface. And you can do it that way. Or, okay, so now, if you're, I'm going to, before I don't want to forget it, if you're doing this from scratch, like in, we use this program, QTVLM, we use this in our weather course and in our electronic charting course. But in our inland and coastal navigation course, we use a different program. We use OpenCPN. But if you are using some other program and you want to experiment with using just tides and currents here, then we have instructions. That, where would that be? Um, okay. Uh, oh, this is a video. This is our tutorial, our video tutorial. So you would come in here, and this program tells you how to install the program, QTVLM, on a Mac or a PC. So you just want to install the program. And then this tides and currents tells you how to install the harmonics. Now, the one thing unique about this program is it has these phenomenal features, but it doesn't come with any tide and current data in the program. You have to load that yourself. And the, and the logic of that is this is really an international program, not just an American program. It's used throughout the world. And in other parts of the world, they have different harmonics and they may not care about U.S. harmonics. So you load them yourself, and these are straightforward. There's videos on how to do that. So how you could set this up to just get started with playing with tides and currents alone without getting involved in charts or navigation or the other features of the program, you can follow through and do that if you like. Um, all right, so let's look at some of these features. Um, uh, Okay, uh, let's maybe look at, oh, I've got the currents here. Let's just start with the current. I'm going to just click that one and go to details. And this, this generic extra information is about the same on, um, on other programs. Now, you can also, you can change the size of this window and, you know, and so forth. So the first thing up, the pink, this little pink line is the data right now, this moment. So at 11.05, it's 197, and that's an ebb in direction 240. These are like the, um, the see, green flood, and that's that direction. And where am I looking? I'm, I was looking, I think, right here somewhere. So, but now the other fancier things that we have here, well, first of all, let's see, is there multiple depths? Yeah, there's other depths. So you could look at the, de the water down there, how, how it changes as you get deeper in the water. But this is the top of the surface right here. So that's a unique feature here. But then here is one thing. 
that is really nice for planning. Suppose you're planning a trip this summer and you want to know, it's now April, let's just say I want to know in, I'm going to go in August, August 9th, I'm going on a planning a holiday, vacation chartering holiday. So I can click that. So now I can actually look at the current at this place or any other place in the waterway uh, and uh, get the um, get the currents, get the currents. And on top, and you can go back, you can go historically back, you know, if you're working problems from a textbook and it back 10 years ago, you can go back and look at the currents 10 years ago. The other thing that's unique here is that you can look at the data, you can look at the, you can change this time, and this is a unique thing to this program, you can change the time scale to match, like if I'm in my local area up here, Puget, I'm in the Puget Sound, the Pacific Northwest, then I want my local time, and that happens to be UTC minus 7, Pacific Daylight Time. But if I had some reason to, for one reason or another, working on a problem or something, I could switch to... Um, UTC. I could view it in Greenwich Mean Time or so forth, but generally it'd be local time. Now here, local time and station time is exactly the same. But suppose I'm here in Seattle and I'm planning to go on a sailing holiday in the Chesapeake Bay or something back east. So let me do that. I'm going to push the, I've set this up to, you can store zones. Let me go to number 12. Okay, so here's now the currents around Long Island. And so now let me go here and look at these details here. So now I'm looking at the currents at Long Island. Here's now, like that. But now you see, this is the time. These are the times relative to my watch on my clock right now sitting here in Seattle in the summertime. But if I'm going, let's say I'm going in August, I'm going uh, up here in August, I say, well, August is still going to be the same. Well, okay, it's, it's August. So I'm going, did I do it? No. August, uh, August 16th, okay. So here's August 16th. Now I could do, what I can do is say, tell me the time, it's gonna be Eastern Daylight Time there. So now I'm looking at the currents exactly what I want. It's Eastern Daylight Time in uh, Long Island Sound and so forth. All right, so that's the way that works. Very nice feature for planning ahead. You can also look at the phase of the moon. Now, this is like no moon, new moon. So you can then just click this to see if, let's say, you're, you, can, you have a choice when you want to go and you know you have to do some night, nighttime landing, then you might want to pick this where there's, a, you know, where there's a nice bright moon. So there's now, there's a full moon and so forth. This also will correlate with, this, with the heights of the tides and the, and the speed of the currents the range of the tide and speed of the current. Okay, the other thing we have up here, this, this is also a very nice feature. This is sunrise. So sunrise on um, August 28th of uh, August 28th is going to be, uh, 20 is gonna be a what, 607. And the sunset is going to be uh, 1942. And, that, and, and the time zone, that's Eastern Daylight Time. You see, that's just what you're gonna to wanna to know. This gray bar, or brown, or whatever, this is the length of nautical twilight. So somewhere in here is civil twilight, where it's starting to get dark, and then nautical twilight is when everybody agrees it's dark. From your boat, you cannot see the horizon. You know, maybe if there's a bright moon, you can see the horizon, but without extra moonlight or something, you can't see the horizon. So celestial navigators, that's the end. You're not taking any sights anymore because you can't see the horizon. So this is dark. So this is dark and this is sunrise. Now throughout this period, you have various levels of lightness. But anyway, here's where it's dark. In the morning, you start seeing some light here, then the sun comes up. Then over here, the sun goes down, but it's still bright, you got a little bit like that. So you've got that very nice feature. Let me go back to the northwest here. In fact, let me, um, let's see, why is this little chart here? Let me just get rid of that chart for the moment and then go uh, and then just shut these off. Okay, let's go up. Oh, and now I have all the charts of the world. Let me go back here. I wanna go up into Alaska. 
What do I have here? Tides? Oh, I got currents and tides. Let me turn on the tides. And then, okay, so now you see, I only see these dots. Now, where's turn again on? Okay, right in here are some of the largest tides in the U.S., right in this area right here, turn again arm. And then if I zoom in, then eventually those are turned into little gauges. There you go. So I could look at the tides here, or I can look at the tides here, detail. Now, you see you're going to have a lot longer twilight up here. Where are we? April. Let's go to like June. It's even going to be more June. Well, you see how you can play with this June 21st. Okay, something like that. And now, oh, these are meters. Okay, look, I was doing those in meters. Let's go back here to the configuration of the program, units, and change everything to feet. Okay, now we're in feet. All right, now I go here. I can check the details. All right, now look, there's 24 feet, but you can go through here. I mean, this will go up to 30, oh, 35 feet up in this area. But anyway, you can play with that. And then you could also go, now I'm Alaska Daylight Time. Alaska Daylight Time here and so forth. So that's the, um, that's the, let me go back to Seattle, F9. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show is, let's just look out here just to show you how this works. There's a detail. Now look, here's on the coast. On the coast, the sunrise is at 6.05, 6.05. 609, 609, escape. Now we come in here, and this, and now we look at the sunrise here in Elliott Bay, and uh, what have we got here, 605. You see, now it's a 602. So you see, it accounts for the sun moving across the planet here on figuring the time of sunrise and sunset. Well, that is the main things. Let's see, did I wanna say, I think I've done everything I want to say. Again, we have all these links that work for uh, uh, setting up the program and getting started with it.